Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I have uh, my presentation quite differently. It's uh, HTML formatted, and then I don't know why, but my um, uh, keynote speaker's queue is displayed. So probably <laughs> you know what I'm talking about already. <laughs> well, apparently no. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But uh, I I hope you guys are still awake for uh, this uh, last presentation for today. Um, so yeah, a little bit introduction. I'm working for the Hive since uh, 2013, and uh, yeah, my first involvement with Transmart is actually with the um, uh, CTMM Trade Project. And because of my uh, background of uh, software uh, development, I was mainly involved in the front-end development. And then um, yeah, I had contributed actually in the um, uh, core module of the Transmart uh, platform in mostly in the uh, Dataset Explorer and also in our module. Um, so yeah, um, what we did was basically we, we tried out a new concept of uh, Transmat UI, but then before we go there, um, I think it um, would be good if we uh, understand it by uh, going through the Transmat evolution uh, from time to time. And then uh, later I will show you how uh, the prototype that we built and then also the challenge that we had and then also the future plans. So when the first it came out at, um, uh, as an open source project, Transmart app is basically like um, a, a, a Grails application where uh, yeah, most of the Grails application has this uh, structure. I just uh, took this from the Grails website. But then on top of that, um, Transmart app has um, like um, um, uh, like other uh, web application, it has like HTML for elements and then uh, CSS styling, but also has some library called um, XJS uh, version 2.2. And then uh, Transmart is released as an open source um, project, uh, and then under uh, Transmart Foundation. The source code um, immediately available in the GitHub, and then um, we have a lot of downloads, and then forked by a lot of institution, and academic, and an yeah, industrial, commercial, and everything. And then uh, each of us, sorry if there is a logo that is not displayed here. And oh yeah, um, there's some customization on each uh, code bases for for their own needs. <coughs> And then we have a lot of this initiation. Um, Transmart Foundation conduct every um, meetings and events. And then, um, yeah, we basically collaborate and then uh, discuss about what we have been um, uh, developed for each parties. And then uh, we merge it together again in the uh, master branch in the Transmart Foundation GitHub. And then, yeah, so far I could have listed, but this is so far that I came up that we have a new look and feel. Um, so far, I uh, I remember that the first it came out, it like um, a grayish thingy, and then now we have like purplish thingy. And then we have a lot of plugins, and then we have uh, more analytical tools, and um, we have more data tech support. <coughs> so um, the changes is not only in the, in the features, but also in the application structure. So this is um, version 1.1. And then uh, this is the, the latest version, the latest stable version that we have. Um, we started with the Grails version 1.3.7 uh, in the back end. And then we have um, HTML elements, uh, web, web elements on the front end, and then XGS uh, version 2.2. And then after, um, yeah, during um, a merging, and then we uh, have a constant upgrading on the back end side. We have Grails uh, 2, 3, 11. And then we also have more plugins. <coughs> but then on the um, UI side, it stay the same. Well, actually, it's not really stay the same. We have more stuff there. I mean, um, why, why we have more stuff there? I mean, uh, why we don't upgrade XJS? Why why we stay with uh, version 2.0? Um, because this version is actually released in 2008, and then you know we upgrade stuff, right? I mean we um, we buy a new phone every year, and then why we don't uh, upgrade Transmart? So what is XJS? XJS is actually an application framework, a JavaScript application library that is responsible to build this uh, elements in the UI. As you might um, already familiar that these um, study tree and then also the grid, 
this is uh, created by XJS library. And then we really couldn't get out from it um, because this play the main role on a user behavior and, and when you are doing some analysis and processes. So this is the good and the bad of the XJS. So um, it's widget based and then it's ready to use. So it's really simple for the programmer who doesn't uh, really know about uh, front end development. And there's a lot of example out there. But then it's updated because now it's 2015 and then we are still using the version that is released in 2008. And then this version is no longer supported by the company that umbrella this library. And then there were major rewriting from 2x to 3x. So last time we also tried to upgrade this library but then yeah. Basically, if you upgrade the library, then you need everything will not work because uh, the comments are so different. And new version require licensing, and um, yeah, the licensing is a little bit uh, suspicious, um, so it's not fully uh, GPL version three, and yeah, it's really tightly coupled with with all the major elements. And then, yeah, if we are doing, keep doing uh, these practices, then we will end up with a lot of unused legacy codes on the front end. And then, yeah, that means spaghetti codes, which, uh, and um, unfortunately, we don't have structure in UI developments. I mean, there is some structure in the backend development, but then UI development is most of the time is like copy and paste and then put it <laughs> there because it's JavaScript. And then you see, um, we also have like inconsistent look and feel. Sometimes you see this in some tabs, and then sometimes you see this, and sometimes you see something like that. And then also not testing framework. And then, um, yeah, uh, early this year we gathered in the architecture working group and then we do a lot of workshop and then we discuss a lot of stuff. And then the UI is one of the uh, things that we discuss. And, <clears throat> but yeah, in short, in short words, that we want to have a modular architecture in 2.0 platform and then how this will influence the UI. So, and this is the, the current version, as you saw uh, earlier. But then I put this in orange because uh, this recipe I uh, do the special stuff. It's exposed um, all the ma all, all the uh, surfaces that uh, is uh, very trans uh, specific. So, for example, you can uh, you can get studies, observation, uh, get subjects, and everything from um, outside at trans -mod. So it means. Um, our client can can use uh, these services, can can retrieve data from Trasma. Other third parties like Spotfire, and then also, um, yeah, uh, my colleague Ward is actually doing some uh, this uh, uh, Android thingy, so he can display some Trasma thingy in the uh, in Android phone. And then it's also, um, <coughs> yeah, it it gives us an idea that actually with these services we can create a new UI, completely new UI. So that means we are not dealing again with these uh, legacy codes, and then um, actually the back. I mean, a transmat can be simply as simple as this. So uh, you are dealing with the a transmat can only deals with the uh, backend codes, and then the new I could completely separate uh, project, which is um, yeah only as a consumer who consume the transmat as an endpoint. <coughs> so then. Yeah, um, this initiative is actually uh, funded under uh, IMI a project for the uh, um, new drugs for the uh, bed bugs, and then um, our goal is to project the Transmat UI that is modular, now up to date with the technology, and then enhance the user experience, and then decouple from the backend code. <coughs> so yeah, um, this so um, the Transmat based UI. Then what I'm going to say here. So okay. Yeah, let's just go uh, see how it looks like. So yeah, um, I created like this uh, GIF animation, but basically uh, this is like the um, how it looks like right now. Um, it's uh, available in our uh, demo server, so everybody can just go there. I, I share this slides later, and then you can just click uh, the, the link there. <coughs> and yeah, so what is Transmart Base UI? It's actually uh, built by. Um, a web 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 elements, so it's purely HTML, uh, JavaScript, and CSS, with the help of some frameworks, um, Angular, uh, DCJS, and then um, bootstrapping. I will go in um, detail on each one of these libraries next. <coughs> 
So why is Angular JS? Well, the uh, the honest answer is because in the uh, workshop group we decided to use it. <laughs> and but then yeah, uh, uh, the reason why we uh, we, we select this uh, library, this JavaScript library, because um, everything you need to build, like uh, create, read, and update and delete application, um, is already there. You can just use it. You have already the structure. And then there is a data binding. You don't have to think about data binding. Like, um, for example, if something happened on this page and then this page should be updated, those already exist. So for us, um, front-end developer is really handy. And then they also um, provide, like, um, uh, testing framework as well. So the code that you deliver will be um, Tested, will be tested, and then to test you need to mock, and then this kind of framework is already there, and then the structure is already provided as well, and um, it's also very popular because it's maintained by Google, and the community is very large, uh, especially I mean here in the Netherlands we have a lot of um, uh, meetup, um, <coughs> and another library that we use is the for visualization is the DCJS. DCJS is um, is the marriage between uh, the three that uh, Shasha just explained with the cross filter. And the three JS is, as you, uh, we already understand from a previous presentation, is the um, JavaScript library that is responsible, um, that is uh, yeah, for the visualization, while the cross filter is um, a library to help you to um, explore the large multivariate data set in the browser. So imagine if you have to deal like with a lot of, um, with, with the data, with a lot of uh, large data set, then you can do a filtering and everything is very fast. And then we also use a scaffolding technique. So it means um, all the codes that we produce is basically like uh, one line of command. And then um, the, the, the guy with the mustache there is called Yeoman. So Yeoman is automatically generates the whole application structure like instantly is like in five seconds so in, in, in five seconds you already got the unit testing framework build system framework package management and then end-to-end -end testing to test the functionality so then you can just ready to develop the feature that you want while uh, the, the structure is already created so this is the typical of um, the angular application as you can see um, this is grouped by the features and um, like components is something that is shareable between uh, among <laughs> inside the project. And then as you can see in the main, there is uh, some files and also dot spec. And then dot spec is actually the testing. So, so um, we can probably say that this is the first UI that uh, provided by the testing um, files. And yeah, um, I'm going to go into the each uh, features that we uh, developed. Um, so this is the cohort selection. So the cohort selection, we had an idea that cohort selection should be done in the interactive way. So with the D3 JS, uh, with the DC JS, uh, with the help of cross filter, like you um, select the uh, the amount of um, cohort, and then everything is linked. And if you want to select, like uh, for example here. Um, you know, some range of subjects and of age, and then everything will uh, change um, dynamically according to your selection. <coughs> and then we also try out, like with the advanced dot, when you uh, combine, if you want to combine two um, two chart between a categorical chart, then you will produce like a heat map like, and then if you combine the numerical with the uh, categorical and then you will see the box plot there. <coughs> so um, one thing that we also tried out is to connect to multiple REST endpoints. Um, it means that you can connect to multiple Transmart instances and then retrieve the different studies from this instance and then um, study and then another study from this instance and then you group it together. <coughs> And um, what else? Yeah, we also have this, what we call advanced analysis module, which, which is comparable to uh, our module. So um, yeah, basically um, <coughs> in, in, in the front end, there is nothing special. 
Um, so it's basically just fetching the data and then later you execute it into the heat map. But then what is interesting is on the on the back end side. On the back end side, we make the R expose as a as a surface with the help of Open CPU. So what what it means? It means if you are um, a data scientist and then you want to create, uh, you want to have an analytical uh, tools with R, then you can just focus yourself on creating the R. And then the UI, the, 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 the project, for example, I want to have a heat map with the input parameter um, high dimensional data. And then um, the, the, the UI will create the, the input for you. So um, this input, is not created in, in, in the analytical tool itself. So if if now in the R module, if you want to add an analytical to, uh, analysis, you need to create an HTML, you need to create a controller, you need to create an R. But with, with this way, if you expose the R in the separate instances, then you just need to create an R. <coughs> so this is one of the example of the um, R script. I really running out of time. So I'm going to skip. <laughs> so uh, there are some. I mean, I mean, yeah. Um, those those are things that we uh, we did for the last uh, five months. But then we still have a lot of things to do, and we need to bring a lot of uh, features. And then um, longitudinal data is something that is interesting. Then probably we want to think about how to uh, to, to to display it uh, on uh, to to people. And of course, like uh, yeah, Shasta said, also the feedback and review is very important from the user. So we we couldn't think of what we need to build, uh, but then with the help of the feedback and review, that probably it will be helpful. And there are some challenges as well that we are facing. AngularJS, even though it provides you a, a nice structure, but then. Um, yeah, they, they also have a plan for 2.0, which is going to be a major rewrite. But uh, they said, um, as long as you upgrade like uh, gradually, then it should be a smooth transition. And multiple endpoints, this is related to the um, transmat architecture in the, as a whole. So if we want to retrieve cross-study, and then we want to do an analytical tools, the data is, needs to be ready first before you can do some processing. And then performance, um, this is what we are facing. Like, um, if you want to have a full um, visualization of like the full set of your data, then you you want to have the summary, not like every data that you uh, retrieve to, to to the UI. So this is uh, things that we need to think about. And yeah, this is the summary that I just um, <coughs> presented. There is an emerging need to upgrade transmat presentation layer, and yeah, otherwise you will end up with a lot of legacy codes. RESTful API is a lot of nice things uh, that happened in uh, last year. And then AngularJS is used in our prototype, and we have a lot of challenges. And for all the resources that um, you saw just now, um, you can get all the resources from the GitHub. And then if you want to try it out live here, if you need some password, um, just ask me <laughs> because you need to connect to the data with, with the password. And there's a wiki side about it. And yeah, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. If there's any questions. <laughs> so the open CPU um, part, uh, just haven't seen a social presentation. Mm -hmm. Is that a similar kind of solution compared to? Um, no. And smart R is um, yeah, smart R is smart R, but um, Open CPU is basically exposing the the R function um, as a surface. So it's so so it's it's not smart R. So basically, you um, you put um, an uh, an analytical tool in something uh, in some instances. Well, yeah, this is like the additional things that we we did. So I'm I'm also not really. Um, this is not also not really our focus, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's different. It's not our. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, one one. 
Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> but um, there is a blocker in the RS API. But this is like the grill. You just need to um, um, to install the plugin. But it's already merged into the uh, master branch in terms of foundation. So basically, you can connect to to the instance. Any other question? Yes. Yes. Um, you go to the data source on the tab. Yeah, maybe I don't know if it's good to um, yeah to see it alive. Um, I don't know how to. So yeah, okay, cool. Mm. So we only have like a one instance running now, and then get authorization code, and then you log in, and then, yeah, this this workflow is not really smooth. So we would like to change it so that you don't have to do things like this. Where is the control button? And then you go back. <laughs> And then control C. Yeah, then you connect to um, yeah to the endpoint. So what is the credential you use to load it? <laughs> yeah, it's it's, uh, it's 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 very easy. I think you can guess it. Yeah. Oh. Sh yeah. So um, yeah, as you can see, for example, I'm going to have um, I think it's frozen. And then this is that. Yeah, the analysis is still not working. Um, I don't know why, but then um, there is something wrong with the Open CPU instances that we we had. But um, but it was running in in my local. So yeah, I don't know. Why. So um, we we can see immediately like the cohort grid here. And for example, I want to select like this one, and three. Yeah, let's say let's see the differences. Like now down to nine, then we only have like nine record. You can export it already to CSV on text. Oh yeah, the things that we are currently doing now is um, yeah, you can export your selection into file. Um, this. So that's the same question that was asked, that asked before, right? So you can export your current selections now? Yeah, we are uh, we are still in progress of doing it because um, the, the the big challenge is to reload it. <laughs> so so you need to um, you need to save all of these parameters that you just selected into um, into the file, and then when you reload them, and then you need to uh, redraw all the graph, and then. Um, you need to also reconnect and then check the connection whether it still exists to uh, your endpoint. And yeah, I think small things like metadata is already there as well. So and finally, yeah. when can we expect to ditch the uh, old interface? Sorry? When can we expect to ditch the old interface and go for a new one? Well, yeah, that needs to be discussed with, with the foundation, I guess. <laughs> okay, any other questions? I just wanted to have some kind of a User focus groups before you go into this interface. This one looks mm -hmm. very different from the one we have right now. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, so that is actually um, yeah maybe what we can uh, propose to the uh, foundation and mm -hmm. see um, how users react to into this. I mean, uh, we already did some uh, presentation internally and. Um, yeah, we also have some good feedback from them. But then, yeah, I think it might be nice if we have like a larger audience and about this. <coughs> yes. That's, that's really great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Viss? Ja, ja. Det har han bättre. Ja. Okay, so thank you very much, Risa. Uh, only thing I want to say is uh, right now there is a plan uh, that we're doing uh, the summary of day one starting in uh, 2012. Thank you very much for your attendance and thank you. <laughs>